action. Well, gallant and defiant is how a former Deputy President Pumzile Mlambo Nuka has described the late Madikizela Mandela. Our correspondent Sharon Bryce Peace has uh, this reaction from the United Nations in New York. Well, we cross uh, now live to our correspondent uh, in uh, New York, uh, Sharon, Bryce, Sharon Bryce Peace uh, from uh, New York. Uh, and uh, we go to the UN to speak to our correspondent. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Sharon, uh, from uh, New York. What's the reaction been uh, in the United States to this uh, passing away of Mama Matikazela Mandela? Well, I think it's fair to say that it's not on the same level that we saw a few years ago at the passing of former president uh, Nelson Kholislahla Mandela. Yes, there have been pieces in all the major newspapers, the New York Times, the Washington Post. We got reaction uh, yesterday from the Secretary General in which uh, he talked about his sadness at the passing of Winnie Madikizela Mandela, a leading figure uh, at the forefront of the fight against apartheid in South Africa. He called her a strong and a fearless voice in the struggle for equal rights and that she will be remembered as a symbol of resistance. But on the broader spectrum of things, if you are expecting a reaction uh, from the Obamas, for example, the uh, Bush family, uh, the, the, the very two Bush presidents that were both in the White House, the Trump White House, we haven't heard anything in reaction to her passing uh, from those figures, certainly in the United States. Of course, uh, Sharon, she was the 1985 recipient of uh, the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Award. She's a figure uh, that's much loved in the United States, particularly uh, because of the intersection of the anti-apartheid struggle with the civil rights movement. Uh, glowing tributes uh, from uh, figures uh, in that struggle. Absolutely. Uh, the likes of uh, Maxine Waters, for example, who played a very big role in the United States Congress in the anti-apartheid movement, a very critical role in the imposition of that, the, that famous sanctions bill signed uh, uh, by uh, then-President Ronald Reagan, uh, which was literally overridden uh, by such a huge majority in Congress that he had no choice uh, as president but to sign that legislation. Uh, Maxine Waters on Twitter earlier talking about mourning the loss of her dear friend and one of the greatest leaders leaders and activists in the world. Another big name uh, in that struggle would have been the Reverend uh, Jesse Jackson Sr. In the darkest hours of the struggle to free South Africa with Nelson Mandela in prison, the face of hope and courage was Winnie Mandela. And it should be lost on, on nobody, particularly uh, in, in the diaspora, particularly on the continent of Africa, that of course uh, the passing of Mama Winnie Madigazela Mandela comes at a time when the United States will be commemorating the 50th anniversary of the assassination nation of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. That will happen tomorrow. So a number of those iconic names that I've just mentioned are in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, literally at the site of that uh, motel where, uh, unfortunately, 50 years ago, Martin Luther King was gunned down. I have a little uh, snippet for you, uh, Bongani, if you will let me. Uh, I am hearing from uh, officials here in New York uh, that there are early discussions around a type of memorial to be held in the UN General Assembly. This, of course, needs to be confirmed still by the President of the General Assembly, but we understand South African diplomats here in New York are in conversation with them about a memorial in the General Assembly, hopefully by Friday this week, and we understand a separate memorial also to be planned in Harlem, just north of Manhattan, where we are here. And of course, the scene of that famous discussion when Winnie Madigizela Mandela, then Winnie Mandela, married to Nelson Mandela soon after his exit from prison in 1990, that famous town hall where he defended his relationship with the likes of Cuba and Fidel Castro and uh, uh, Yasser Arafat of the Palestinian Authority. I'm sure you uh, remember that, uh, seeing that video, uh, Bongani, of uh, that discussion with T Ted Koppel. And of course, uh, Winnie Madigazela Mandela then seated alongside Dave Dinkins, uh, the then mayor of New York, the first and only black mayor of New York, and the Reverend uh, Jesse Jackson alongside her there. In fact, show, and I've got a tweet uh, that was tweeted by the Reverend Jesse Jackson. You'll be pleased to know uh, that we've made contact with him and we should be able to speak to him in a few minutes. But he tweeted a little earlier, in the darkest hours of the struggle to free South Africa with Nelson Mandela in prison, the face uh, and hope and uh, courage, uh, the face of hope and courage was hashtag Winnie Mandela. May she forever rest in power. That was uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. He himself, of course, uh, running for office in 
the United States during those dark times. But of course, show in America remains polarized, I suppose, on many issues, not least how they will remember anti-apartheid activists and indeed uh, the struggle and how it is framed today as well as it was in the 80s. It was a huge battle, Bongani, in the 80s. I mean, as I mentioned, that sanctions package that was a real struggle to get through the United States Congress, the likes of the Jesse Jacksons and the Maxine Waters and the Barbara Lees, a congresswoman uh, from California. You know, the, the, the black con congressional black caucus in the United States played a fundamental role and recognize the type of leadership that it took to overcome uh, the draconian nature of what apartheid represented. And I think there was this disparity in the United States, this white versus black, this capitalist versus, you know, what, what was then regarded as, you know, a antithetical or communist, if you will. And I think you see that that still play itself out, even in the narratives, in the editorials you see in newspapers today. I think a lot of South Africans are very critical of some of the headlines they've seen in some of the Western media. Reuters, for example, yesterday referred to uh, the late uh, Madigizela Mandela as a mother of the nation that became a mugger of the nation. And I think that sort of just rubs people up the wrong way. I'll read you something from the New York Times editorial. They described her as charming, intelligent, complex, fiery, and eloquent. Ms. Madikizela Mandela uh, was inevitably known uh, to most of the world through her marriage to the revered Mr. Mandela. It was a bond that endured ambiguously. She derived a vaunted status from their shared struggle, yet she chafed at being defined by him. One more for you from the Washington Post. At the time of her death, long after her divorce from the country's democratically elected president, Ms. Madigizela Mandela was still called the mother of the nation, and in many ways, she epitomized the so-called New South Africa far more than her idealized former husband. So that really just gives you a sense of uh, some of the editorial notions and narratives that are describing her, certainly here in the Western world. Well, thank you very much with those reflections in New York, our correspondent there at the United Nations, Sherwin Bryce Pease.